for Scottish Apprenticeship Week, we are going to be focusing on a concept um, that has been developed at the Manufacturing Skills Academy um, called the Pre-Approved Talent System, um, PATS project for short, um, and it focuses on apprenticeships and graduates. Um, so what I'd like to do is, first of all, introduce myself. Um, my name's Avril Thompson. I am Head of Skills Programmes for the Manufacturing Skills Academy at NMIS. And this is my email address if you'd like to contact me. I've got a few housekeeping announcements to make. So this webinar has been recorded today. You should also be able to access this recording through YouTube um, later. I am planning today to talk for a slightly less time and hoping that we can have a bit of a discussion towards the end of this webinar today. So get some insights, get some feedback um, and um, basically a bit of discussion going around this topic. During um, part of the presentation, your microphones and cameras will be turned off. Um, however, when we move into the discussion part of the call, I believe that Laura will unmute you um, and allow you to speak so that we can we can do so. While I'm talking today, um, it's possible to use the chat tool if you want to post questions. Um, and we have Laura from our marketing team along. Um, so she'll be monitoring the chat tool. And as I said, at the end of today's presentation, there should be lots of time for questions, discussion, etc. And there's a little survey as well. It would be great if you could um, respond to that survey, survey if you have time. So what I'm going to do today is just to chat through First of all, an introduction to NMIS, what NMIS is, um, what its ambitions are, etc. I'd also like to give you an overview of the Manufacturing Skills Academy at NMIS. I'm then going to talk through the PATS approach, so pre-approved talent system. I'm going to talk through the background and rationale for this and present the concept. And then as I've said, there'll be lots of time at the end for comments, questions, any interest that you have potentially um, in the system or participating in our project. So um, NMIS, the National Manufacturing Institute of Scotland, is a group of industry-led manufacturing research and development facilities. It's essentially an innovative space where industry, academia, and the public sector work together. Um, and the aim is to transform manufacturing industry, transform manufacturing productivity, making companies within Scotland and the UK more competitive um, and to boost the skills of the current and future workforce. So the ambitions of NMIS are to increase the pr productivity by reducing barriers and innovation. It's aiming to create more jobs in manufacturing and strengthen the supply chain throughout Scotland and the UK and essentially grow the economy due to increased manufacturing competitiveness. And fundamentally, to inspire and attract the talent and the skills for future workforces for manufacturing and, industry and engineering community. So NMIS is a collaboration is at the heart of NMIS. It's operated by the University of Strathclyde, but is part of the high value manufacturing catapult. And it's supported by a range of organisations as represented on this slide, which together are known as the One Scotland team. 
as you can see from this slide, in Mr. a community um, consisting of specialist technology centres and the Skills Academy. So the Manufacturing Skills Academy is at the core of NMIS, alongside Lightweight Manufacturing, Advanced Form and Research Centre and the Digital Factory. I'd just like to give you a little bit of insight into the Manufacturing Skills Academy, um, which is where I'm based in NMIS and what our aims and objectives are. The Manufacturing Skills Academy, obviously the, the, the overall vision of NMIS is to transform the manufacturing industry um, throughout Scotland and the UK and improve competitiveness. We are working and supporting employers to address skills gaps um, and working across Scottish organisations to build on existing provision, but also create new um, provision for upskilling, reskilling, um, training, etc., in order to meet any skills gaps. We're also looking ahead um, to identify new skills gaps. So we're actually foresighting and looking at what future roles um, and skills are going to be required in manufacturing engineering um, and therefore helping employers and industry to be prepared um, for these new skills and provide access to our equipment and training within um, the Manufacturing Skills Academy, but also to signpost to any other centres that we are collaborating with if that training or equipment exists elsewhere. So we do collaborate with other centres. We are working hard to encourage youth to pursue a career in manufacturing. Um, so we work with schools, we work with communities, um, we aim to showcase manufacturing as an attractive, clean, high-tech industry. One of the key features of the Manufacturing Skills Academy is that we are working through end-to-end -to, -end to provide end-to-end -end through life learning. So we work with the full spectrum from primary school through secondary school, with apprentices, students, graduates, early career engineers and technicians, senior engineers and CEOs and managers, engineer managers, right through to um, potentially people who are about to retire or have recently retired. Um, so it's the full end-to-end -end through life learning um, package. So what I'd like to do now is just to provide a little bit of an overview of the pre-approved talent system or PATS. Um, so to start off with just a little bit of background and rationale behind where this concept came from. It's clear that there are significant labour market shortages, particularly in engineering and manufacturing. Um, this is ongoing and it's going to continue. And we're aware that many employers struggle to find the right apprentices and graduates to meet their needs. There's also um, awareness that many large employers who appear attractive to apprentices and graduates and have large and sophisticated HR departments often interview and assess many more prospective apprentices and graduates than they require. Okay, so therefore they are in a position where they are essentially rejecting candidates who are skilled, who have the necessary attributes and who meet the assessment criteria, but they maybe just can't employ them. Maybe they have three spaces 
and there's seven people who cross that threshold. We're also aware that SMEs are reporting high numbers of unsuitable applicants, potentially um, graduates and apprentices um, candidates aren't aware of the SME companies um, and they don't apply um, or they are not as attracted to applying to an SME as they are to some of the large um, companies who are, have got significant mar marketing um, around their organisation. And fundamentally, this can lead to um, loss of talent from engineering and manufacturing to other sectors. So potentially um, good candidates for engineering and manufacturing, apprentices or graduates, they may apply to other sectors or if they're rejected from some of the large, larger organisations that they apply to, they may then look to other sectors such as finance, etc. Um, and being highly employable and skilled, um, there is a risk that they're lost to these sectors. Also, particularly within the graduate market, there is a migration of talent um, from Scotland following graduation. Um, so part of this, one of the aims of this approach is to stop this migration or reduce it and keep our um, talent in Scotland. So um, the product of our education system remains in Scotland through apprenticeships, uh, graduate employment, and ultimately boosts the economy. So what I'd like to do is just to present the, the concept behind um, the, the PATS project, pre-approved talent system. So as we've discussed already, large organisations are able to attract lots of applicants um, for their apprenticeships and their graduate programme. Often hundreds and certainly many multiples more than what they require. Because of the resources they have, they put them through rigorous um, assessment before selecting the candidates that they would like to employ. And if we consider here, for every one person that they choose, there are potentially another two who have passed the assessments, who gave a strong interview, um, meet the standards required, but there just aren't enough spaces potentially to bring them on at that point in time. The PATS approach concept aims to open this talent pool and connect it to SMEs and potentially other large employers. So fundamentally, the approach would be um, that apprentices or graduates apply to organisations, to an organisation. And when they do, that they would have the option to be contacted by other recruiting organisations if they were unsuccessful. OK, so they apply to the organisation. They would follow the normal process of being assessed. So that would often include things like competency tests, interviews, etc. Following this stage, the apprentices and graduates are typically ranked. And there would normally be a threshold where um, the candidates are deemed to be employable. Um, within that organisation. However, there is space 
to employ a limited number. And this is where essentially the PATS approach would kick in. So obviously there will be some apprentices and graduates who fall below the standards when they've been assessed. The idea here would be that these apprentices and graduates would be signposted to other routes. Um, so perhaps for apprentices, they might be signposted to college and for apprentices and graduates, they may actually receive some feedback. Um, it might have been the first time that they've been involved in this type of process and they can learn a lot, get some feedback, go through the system again and potentially be um, employed next time. Obviously, at the other end of the spectrum, um, following this process, there will be apprentices and graduates who are offered a position, which is brilliant for everyone. It's brilliant for the apprentice, the graduate, and the organization. In the middle, what you have is this group, this talent pool of apprentices and graduates who essentially are pre-approved. They've been assessed, they've been interviewed, the, their competencies has been checked. They meet the standard and the threshold and are, are essentially good candidates, um, but they just have fallen below the line of the number of graduates or apprentices that can be employed within that organization at that exact time. And this is where um, the first st step, where if they have chosen to be contacted by other recruiting organizations would kick into place, okay? So this talent pool of pre-approved apprentices and graduates would be opened up to other organizations that are part of the system. That's the concept. So basically during March, NMIS are running a pre-approved talent system project feasibility study, uh, where we are going to be investigating the potential for this approach, identifying barriers and hopefully also their solutions. And throughout March, we are going to be interviewing large employers in the sector together with SMEs and individuals, um, essentially to understand the potential barriers and the solutions um, and how, how those might be achieved for this approach. Um, and we'll also be taking, undertaking surveys, um, again, with the employers, um, but also with stakeholders such as Scottish Engineering, Seed and Technology Scotland. What I'd like to do is essentially to open up for a bit of a discussion, to take some comments, questions. I don't know if there are people or who've joined the webinar today who are potentially interested in participating in um, our feasibility study throughout March. Um, if you are, that would be great. Um, you can either email me or um, you can post in the chat. Um, and I think also that Laura, um, who's on the call as well, will be able to unmute you if you wish to ask a question or make a comment. Um, it would be great to have a discussion around um, this concept and its feasibility. Thank you. Yes, that's right. So just uh, feel free to raise your hand if you wish to unmute your mic. Oh, there doesn't. See. Oh, that's Suzanne. I'll just unmute you. Suzanne.
that should be you. Do you want to try and speak? It looks like Suzanne's still muted. I've got, that's me now. Um, Avril, thank you for a, re a really insightful um, presentation. Um, just two points, actually. I had, and I've spoken to some of your colleagues, even through family networks, that there are some, um, as you know, graduates that just, just don't get that first job. And then they end up, mm -hmm. for financial reasons and um, self-esteem, mm -hmm. taking a job actually at the engineering sector. So I think this would help people at that get back into the, the career path they envisaged, perhaps. Um, but I'm also aware that some of the big employers um, do some of this south of the border and do it quite effectively. So for their okay. apprenticeship programmes, um, if they can't, they might have a, a one in 10 appointment ratio. So for the yep. others, what they do is they, if they're suitable, they redirect them through their supply chain. And for that particular yep. company, that's a very significant supply chain. And they give every one of them uh, individual feedback to help them in their next application. So, yeah, I can see there's a need. I'm just wondering, would it perhaps compete with the likes of Skills Development Scotland in some sense, or would it be more collaborative? So, I think, um, Suzanne, we would be aiming to collaborate um, with other organisations, or this approach would be aim aiming to be collaborative. It's essentially aimed at benefiting all stakeholders, so benefiting, as you say, graduates or apprentices who might not um, might go to other sectors um, for for whatever reason, or may actually leave Scotland or leave the UK for employment. Um, I think it's great to hear things that are similar to this are already ongoing. And I think during March, we will be looking at investigating these further. Um, so it would be brilliant, Suzanne, if we could maybe have a chat about this um, at some point. Um, no and problem, follow up. Avril, I just don't, um, I don't want you to name the company, but it's one that- Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. And I think what, what, we, what we don't, we're not planning to do with the pre-approved talent system is really to replicate things that are already going on, but to complement them and to collaborate with. I hope that answers your question, Suzanne. Yeah, it does. Thank you, Avril. Yeah, it does. Thanks very much, Suzanne. Um, if anyone else would like to speak, just raise your hand. OK, there's no questions in the chat right now, but if anyone would prefer to pop a question in the chat area, um, feel free to do so. Also would be great if anyone's got any comments about either the either the concept or would like to discuss this further offline. Um, if they can either get in touch. My my email address is given on the slide here. Or if they post in the chat that they would like to, you know, have a follow up conversation on this one to one or in a smaller group, that would be fantastic. Yes, and you can send an email to endless inquiries at strath.ac.uk as well, if you wish to follow up on anything after the webinar. Hey yeah, Avro, nobody, no, no other okay. comments. I don't think there are any other questions or comments. So I'd just like to thank everybody for coming along today. Um, and hopefully we'll, we'll be in contact later um, after the webinar. So thanks again for joining today and have a great afternoon. Thanks very much. I'll just bring this meeting to a close. Thank you.